Welcome! It's a great day to be a miner. Today we have an exciting new item. We have the Zotac Twin Edge OC RTX 3060. That's right, the brand new RTX 3060. We're going to unbox it, we're going to set it up, we're going to test this thing out. But without further ado, let's spin that intro. Okay, let's try to open this thing up and see exactly what it looks like. What's in the box? What's in the box? Utmost respect to anyone who does unboxes things with one hand. It's actually quite difficult. All right, let's see what's in the box. What's in the box? Hey, that's just a solid state hard drive. These hands down are the best budget options for your mining rig. A 128 gigabyte silicon power um, SSD and it only runs you about $23, I think. These are perfect for your operating system and they're perfect to get your mining rigs up and running and keep you going. Now let's check out the prize. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Get out of here, box. We don't need you, box. There she is, the Zotac Twin Edge OC RTX 3060, 12 gigabyte, nerfed to the ground ETH mining card. Today we're gonna pull this out, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna test it. We're gonna test it on a bunch of different algorithms and we're going to see what kind of profitability we're gonna get out of this thing. Get a good look at our box here. Zotac RTX 3060. Get amplified with the all new Zotac gaming GeForce graphics card based on the NVIDIA Ampere architecture. All right, let's open this thing up, see what it looks like. Live to game, Zotac. Let's try it again. Zotac. Zotac. Such a cute little box. Look how cute she is. Some cute, <sighs> for comparison. Yeah, she's a cute little thing. Isn't she cute? All right, let's see what's in the box. What's in the box? Get amplified, Zotac Gaming. Guess that's just our insert and our get started manual. Got a nice little foam compartment with nothing in it. Not sure what that's for. And here's our card. Let's check the box. Nothing else in the box, just the foam insert. That's it. No frills, no thrills. That's what $500 gets you nowadays. All right, let's take a look at this thing. This thing's a lot lighter than a 3070, that's for sure. A lot lighter than a 3060 Ti, too. Oh, it's so cute. It does feel kind of nice though. Definitely all plastic shroud. I do love the fan designs that they have on these. And this is the Red Panda fan spin there. Get a little, little, little spin. How's that? All right, so what do we got? We got a nice little eight pin there. 
We do have a nice metal, all metal back plate on this thing. We have just a single HDMI with three display port outs. It looks like a decent little cooler on this thing with a good bit of heat pipes down in through here. I mean, it's a solid little card for what's considered a low tier card now the bottom of the current nvidia 30 series lineup it's uh it's a pretty nice card considering that but the price point of 500 dollars for this thing at msrp is it's pretty terrible in my opinion especially when you can get a founders edition 3070 for the same price if you can get one of course so let's take a look there's our nice logo We'll do a nice little spin on the card, take a look at it. Again, another little fan spin. We're gonna install this thing onto an open air frame. We're gonna put some brand new nice drivers on here that will work with the 3060 specifically because any of the older drivers of course wouldn't work. We're gonna install this thing. We're gonna test it out on every algorithm that we can get off of NiceHash to do it quick, simple, and easy. And then that way it'll also give us a current profitability because that's what we care about. We wanna see what this thing can earn in the mining fields. We're gonna send this thing underground. We're gonna see what it can actually earn us. All right, we've got our 3060 Zotac Twin Edge installed into our gigantic empty frame. This is just a ASRock H81 Pro motherboard with cheapo CPU. So let's see if this thing's gonna work. Let's fire it up for the first time. Power. Green fans. Ooh, those lo logos do look kinda, kinda cool, Zotac. I like your little fan logos. Look at that, look at it go. Oh, I saw some Windows screen there. All right, I already have the newest NVIDIA drivers right here. So we're gonna install these things and then we're gonna see if this card will function properly and then we're gonna check the performance. Device manager. Let's just check real quick to see what it found. So yeah, it's gonna show it as a basic adapter until I install these new NVIDIA graphics display drivers. So we're gonna hop over into a remote session. We're gonna install the new drivers. All right, now we're over into our remote session onto our ASRock board into our test rig. Let's install the newest NVIDIA drivers and get this car recognized. We're doing 461.72. We're gonna time lapse and it's gonna jump back and be installed and the card's gonna be sitting there after this all right, we got our RTX 3060 drivers installed. So the card's reading. I'm gonna do a quick reboot and then I'm gonna launch NiceHash and Afterburner. And then we're gonna benchmark with stock settings. And then we're going to uh, do some testing and we're gonna do some overclocking. We're gonna try to push this thing and we're gonna see what the best profitability and the best efficiency is. Let's jump over into it. All right, back over, we rebooted. Let's go see how it looks in Afterburner. There she is, it's showing up perfect. We're on stock clocks. Now let's pin that up here in the corner and let's launch nice hash. Good old nice hack. Again, I'm only benching and testing on nice hash because one, the ease of switching algorithms, two, that it'll give me a real time profitability to base my comparisons off of. So now we have 23 available algorithms. So this is gonna take a minute, but we're gonna go through these and we're just gonna see what happens. Okay, I let NiceHash completely benchmark all 21 algorithms, I believe. And I got all the stock numbers. I put them into a nice little graph here. We'll do a little zoom up on this with the uh, power of editing so that you'll be able to just better see this and then i went over on to what to mine i plugged in those exact numbers at 170 watts because that's approximate and then i calculated and this is your daily stock 
RTX 3060 numbers according to this card right now. So you could make $3.73 a day on Octopus and that's gonna be probably our number one algorithm to mine right now. So this is just our stock numbers. Now let's pop over, let's do some overclocking. We're gonna weed it down. We're not gonna use all these algorithms because there's no need for all those. This is gonna be the top of each algorithm, the top miner, and then we're going to do some overclock. We're gonna start with 75% power. We're gonna do 100 on the core. We're gonna do 1000 on the memory and we're gonna get the numbers again and we'll flash right back. All right, real quick. So we did our 75% power plus 100 on the core plus 1000. We re-benchmarked all these. We took the benchmarks, we plugged them into what to mine to get the current profitability. And here it is. And these are only the main algorithms and the best miners out of NiceHash. So Octopus is definitely owning at, at $4.46 per day. Whereas Kapow Raven is second in $3.22. And then if you drop down into Octopus via NiceHash, you're losing $1.26 to do it directly into NiceHash. Now we're going to just focus only on our overclocks for Raven, for Kapow, and for Octopus because the others do not hold a candle to these two algorithms at this time. So let's try to dial in the Octopus specific first then we'll try to dial in kapow we're going to see what kind of profitability we actually get and I assume somebody wants to know what the ETH actually earnings are right now a dollar ninety six and that's direct mining the ETH before electric so there's your number for ethereum that's about 25 mega hash um, per second in the name of science, we're gonna check this ETH. We cranked up some optimal settings, pulled the core 500 in the negative, we did 1500 on the memory and 75% power, and we fired up T-Rex just to see what is going to happen. Yeah, this is yuck, 27 mega hash. That's terrible, terrible. So let's go ahead and uh, finish fine tuning octopus because that's going to be the thing to use all right real quick we're just going to go over the numbers this is what i've tuned it to to be the most efficient and the most stable i've got 1300 on my memory plus 125 on the core i'm at 80 percent power limit that's 135 watts now let's see how that would actually translate into real world dollars over on what to mine Bring that over and we put in 46.21 mega hash, 135 watts. Let's calculate this thing, see what we're making. We are making $4.42 before electric, $4.10 after electric. Um, on nice hash, you're dropping clear down to a dollar less basically on both numbers. This card cost $530 after tax. If we divide that by the $4.10, we would have an ROI of 129 days. That is still really, really good numbers. Although these cards are not as desired by miners, this is still a profitable card. If, if this card's going to ROI in four months, I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a deal. Heck of a card, and even at the inflated, this is the inflated $500 model. If you're getting a $329 model, maybe you get just a slight hit to performance, but $329, let's just say $350 card, divided by $4 a day, 87 day ROI. Those $329 cards, those are pretty desirable right now. As long as the market stays as it is and Octopus stays doing well, this is actually a very nice card to have. I wouldn't mind to get a, a handful of these and just set them up and have them running all on Octopus um, all day long if you could actually get the MSRP low end models and not this $500 model that's going to take quite a bit longer. Now if you want to stick around we're going to go into the deep dive numbers with the other algorithms 
and as well as the max numbers, all the different overclocks, and let's just go over into that. All right, so here's our number sheet. We already went through the stock numbers. Here it is. Go ahead and pause the screen if you wanna see what the stock numbers on this card would make with no overclocks throughout a number of different algorithms. Now let's jump over and my first overclock I, I tested thoroughly was a 75% power limit, 100 core, and 1000 memory. I tested it on Beam, Cuckoo Cycle, Dagger Hash, Grin Cockatoo uh, 31, Kapow, and Octopus. Here's all the numbers. I went ahead and ran it through what to mine to see what it would be making per day for each of these. Go ahead and pause it if you want these numbers. Let's jump over into my max settings and to my most efficient settings for this card. As you can see, I spent a lot of time going through all these numbers. These were, uh, I was just systematically going down the list, doing different numbers. Um, and then these bottom ones were kind of what we settled out at. And then over here in the top right, this are, these are the maxed clocks that I was able to obtain with this card. I got, a, I got 27 mega hash on Ethereum at 125 watts, and then I also had 47.59 on Octopus at 170 watts, and then I did a cost per day uh, and per day, and then a days to ROI. Now this is a little skewed because I don't believe there's any way you can run 1500 memory on this card and not get rejected shares. So after quite a bit of testing and about quite a bit of running, I went and got my most efficient settings. I had 80% power, 125 core, plus 1300 memory. That settled me out at 135 watts total. And as you can see over here, we are running completely efficient with no rejected shares. I'm gonna let this run all night, make sure that it stays efficient all night. If it starts rejecting a bunch of shares or at least more than a one or 2%, I'm gonna readjust my clocks and try to get a little bit of a better number. Good morning, quick update. We have been running for over three hours now on Octopus, two hours, 50 minutes to be exact. We have one rejected share out of 124.81%. Um, we are making uh, $3.73 a day on Octopus, currently on NiceHash via Windows. So it's pretty solid. Just wanted to give the update. This is a stable overclock. You may have to dial it back slightly, maybe. So here's the overclocks. I have 125 on the core, 1300 on the memory, running at 80% power limit. I went above the power, I went lower on the power, I went higher on the core, lower on the core, I went higher on the memory, and I cranked the memory clear up until I started getting kickbacks. 1300 seems to have settled in quite nicely with this car so your mileage may vary well there you have it the ethereum nerfed rtx 3060 zotac twin edge oc still a solid mining card making around four dollars a day on octopus but not the ethereum king that we had hoped for about a month ago if you're new to mining and you need some help, make sure to join the Hash Raptor or the Misfit Mining Discord. There's plenty of veterans in there willing to help you out to get you up and mining. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride.